introduce myself. Nicole, if we've never had the pleasure of crossing paths, my name is Bob Stewart. Sherry Ellis, I'm glad you could join me. We're going to jump in here today and, and talk about the formula for 100 listings. I Do me a favor, Brian Harrington, good morning to you, sir. Why don't you guys just check in for me for just a second. Go find the chat like Brian just did. Um, are you a Brit? Hey, Brittany, Zoe, good to see you. Monica, Fort Lauderdale, I bet it's a lot warmer in Fort Lauderdale than it is here this morning in Seattle, Washington. I have a little bit of a chill, actually. Uh, it's about 35 or 7 or something. Adam Berenger, do me a favor, you guys. Let me know, are you a Brivity client or are you... You find your way to this webinar saying, what is this Brivity thing? What, they, they, they know the formula for 100 listings. I'm curious about that. I'm just curious if you're a client. Hey, wait, who was that? You just went flying by. Jackie Ramirez, you good morning from Seattle. Well, technically I'm in Kenmore. So if you're really in Seattle, Monica, Debbie DeGroat, um, one of my favorites, my all-time favorites. Paul Brown, the Well Series. You probably heard my voice stumbling around like a bumbling idiot next to Ben Kinney on that thing. Uh, hi, Candace Ortiz. All right, you guys. Hello from Colorado, Carrie, one of my favorite states in the union. Oh, cool. So Brian, wanted, he's in the process. He wanted to check out the video. All right, you guys. Hood River, Oregon. Heather Wright, my, my stepsister, does some serious kite surfing down in Hood River. Like, she's one of these aggressive kite surfer people. Scottsdale. All right. Uh, it looks scary. <laughs> I agree. It, it does look scary. All right. Let's dive in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen. David Torres will welcome, sir. Hopefully, um, we can give you a little bit of value here and and maybe it's um, at the end, you, you you take a chance to explore, explore. Brian, wait, are you the one that just said you're in Briar? Yeah, if you're in Briar, you're definitely five minutes from me, my friend. All right, let's get in here. Let's let's jump into to the formula for a hundred listings. Hi, Jeanette, Montreal, our friends to the north, big fan. I lived on the border for many years in Blaine, Washington, the border town between Seattle and Vancouver. All right, enough about all of that. Thank you all for joining me. Again, my name is Bob Stewart. Let's let's jump in here. And we, I want to I want to try, look, if you're going to get yourself to a place where one day, and maybe, it, maybe it's not, you know, every year you're doing 100 listings, maybe it's just you're trying to figure out how to get your next, hundred and that's going to, you know, you, you're, that's going to be 50 a year over the next couple of years. The, the very core of this all drills down to how much business is in your database. So I'd like, I know you didn't show up here for a math class today, although we did put the word formula in the title of the class, which tends to mean there's going to be some math involved. And um, I mentioned, I, I grew up on the border town, Blaine, Washington. I was on the math team many, many years ago. Today, guys, I can't do math without this trusty uh, calculator. So do, everybody do me a favor. Hopefully nearby, you've got a little, a little thank you, Heather, a little uh, pen and maybe a scratch pad. I got brevity notepads all over the place. Um, so I, I've got mine out, okay? I got a pen. And then I might need my calculator because uh, it's been a long time since I was in high school math team at, in Blaine, Washington. So everybody get those. Nate Button. I mean, are you Luke Button's brother, Nate? Get out of here. Yeah, duh. that's crazy. Luke, I love uh, your brother. All right. <laughs> what a trip. All right. Um, how much business is in your database? Go board rights. Everybody pen, paper. We're going to start, how many contacts? Like right now, I hope you know this number or you can go grab it really quick. If you're a Brevity client, you can jump into your Brevity people. Just how many contacts are in your database? Maybe you have a Rolodex. I don't know, you're old school. You got a Rolodex. How many cards are in there? Maybe you're on a spreadsheet. Uh, maybe you're in command. Caleb says, I have 150. Jesse says 20,000. Brian says 7,500. Awesome. Write it down. I'm going to write down a thousand. I got a thousand contacts in my database. Everybody, Frank, 
everybody, general contacts, know them, don't know them, past clients, sphere. How many contacts are in that database? Awesome. Everybody's checking in with their number. Love it. All right. This next thing, I, I kind of hope you know. If you don't, you should have this number after today kind of committed to memory. Okay. And some of us might have to go Google in here on this next thing. What is the home ownership rate in your primary county or counties? Nate Button, if you're still up in Whatcom County, my friend, I'll just tell you right now, 62.4% is your home ownership rate in Whatcom County. Now, around the United States, these home ownership rates flex somewhere between 50, like Los Angeles County has one of the lowest home ownership rates in the United States, like 49.5. Some counties, especially throughout the Midwest, 70, we can get up to 70, but what is your home ownership rate in the primary county or counties that you sell real estate into? So a lot of times, by the way, if you're in a county, like I think in places like College Station, uh, Texas, or Tallahassee, Florida, where there's a college town, those tend to have like 55% home ownership rates. But a lot of times the neighboring counties around that will have much higher Jesse Walters, I don't know if you're muted. Uh, yeah, you guys are muted on your end. Like, I don't think you could raise your hand and I could I could have you uh, pop in here. But yeah, you're muted. So talk away on your end. Okay, so yeah, Vicky, 46.2. Okay, so that's a little bit lower than I thought even. Now, that's one of the lowest in the, in the United States, by the way. But 69%, 63.8, 66.7, right? So if you don't know this, you can literally just go Google home ownership rate in Whatcom County. Okay. All right. So you've got that number now. I'm going to write down uh, 60. I'm just going to write down 65% to make my math nice and easy here for us. So I have a thousand contacts in my database. I have a 65% home ownership rate. So multiply them together, you guys, right? If I had a thousand Contacts in my database with a 65% home ownership rate, statistically, I would have about 650 homeowners in my database. So for Paul or Paula, 57% in, in Vegas. What county is that? Man, I, I used to know that county. Anyway, okay. How many, how many contacts in your Clark County? Duh. How many contacts times that home ownership rate? That's going to tell you, Jesse, how many homeowners are in that database. Then we got to figure out, cause we're trying to figure out like how much business is in my database, right? Like on, on a yearly basis, that tends to be how we think about things here in real estate. I, I mean, there's an argument to be made. We should probably be thinking about things monthly, but how often do they move? Now, the National Association of Realtors says on the median people move every 10 years. So in our businesses, when I say our business, I mean place, which is Ben Kinney's kind of big operation. Ben Kinney owns Brivity, and, and I interact almost on a monthly basis with about 200 large teams that are, that are partners with place. In our businesses, we use that factor of 10. We say people move every 10 years. This year, you guys, we've actually been using a factor of 12 because we know that the markets are going to be down, you know, suppressed somewhere between 15 to 25 percent kind of depending where right around the country you're at it might even be worse in some of our markets this year just because inventory is still really tight interest rates have come up a little bit right there's not going to be as many home sales we're partnered with goldman and they've goldman sachs is predicting somewhere between and this has been moving but 4.5 million home sales to 4.8 maybe on the high end a normal year, 5.5, we're coming off of years that had a, a, a over 6 million sales a year. But how often do they move? You can decide to use a factor of 10. If you wanted to be conservative for this year, use a factor of 12. And when I say a factor of, I just mean if you have 650 homeowners in your database, because I had 1,000 contacts, a 65% homeownership rate, a factor of 10 would tell me I have 65 transactions in my database this year. How many transactions does that represent? So everybody go, go run that math for me. Just spit that number out. How, maybe it's a conservative number and you're using a factor of 12. 
for me, had, again, I got to go to my calculator here, but had I used a factor of 12 on my 650 homeowners, right? I'd have 54 transactions. So that conservative estimate for me is 54 transactions. And the, the more normal estimate in a, in a normal year, which I don't think this year is going to be one of those, right, would be 65 transactions. Now, look, for some of you guys that, that have teams, you've got big databases, 20,000, even 9,000. A, a lot of you guys were, were spitting out some pretty big databases that are giving us, Frank, I'm going to give you the, the full formula on a slide here in a second, my friend. Say, now, what percentage of, of those did you get out of that database last year? And look, look guys, I've done this with with a couple of hundred teams, like like in a kind of a reality check mode for for those of you taking the wealth series, right? Uh, the second one was reality check. The reality check for most teams in real estate is you are extracting a fraction of the potential business out of your database, right? You have a database, and and faith, I don't know how many transactions you guys did last year, but you had four hundred and sixty seven potential transactions in there. Let's say you did 100, right? You, you extracted about 20%, 18%, something like that. So what percentage of the potential business? I had, you know, let's say I had 65 deals and in, in, in potentially in there on a, on a thousand. If I had done, you know, 20, right? I'm extracting about 33%. Okay, so here's what we, we find. The vast majority of, of the teams in, inside of Brivity, and even as they get started with us at place, are extracting somewhere between eight and 15% of the potential business in the database. By the way, like to throw a, just an extra wrinkle on top of this, we don't tend to double side many transactions in our, in our lives, but every one of those transactions actually had two sides to it. Now, again, you, you're, you have the contact in here and you're probably, you know, going to play the, a party to one side of their transaction. So we always just use that, that how many transactions number is there. We don't necessarily juice up our opportunity because of sides. But just realize there are two sides to every one of those. So how much opportunity is in there? Most of you guys right now are probably saying, oh, yeah, there's, there's a ton. Like there's a ton of potential opportunity in there. So here's the formula again for you. It's how many contacts, who was that? Yeah, Frank, how many contacts? What's that home ownership rate in your main county? Or sometimes if I have two counties like that are neighboring that have pretty, pretty different ones, like in a college town scenario where it's 55 and 70, I'll use a blended rate there. Give you how many homeowners when you multiply those two numbers. How many will move this year? NAR says on average it's it's ten percent, but we could we could use, so a factor of ten there, but we could use a factor of twelve, which would be about eight percent transacting or moving this year. It will give us how many transactions are in that database? Okay, so then the question becomes like we're here to figure out how do we get to hundred? Right? How do we get to a hundred, guys? We, we've analyzed a lot of data at Brivity over the years. Ben Kinney's big on us trying to figure out, like, how do, we, how, do we, how do we get to that business, right? Like, what are we doing in these databases? And, and look, we're, we're, we can, we know, we're not doing this, like, individually for you, Carrie, if you were a Brivity client, but we do have this kind of big data set where we can look into every, everything at a big data level and say, what is leading to transactions in these databases? Is it market reports being sent out? Is it listing alerts? Is it what, you know, how much website traffic I have? And what we've found is there's one key indicator that sticks out like a big sore toe. Like I just dropped a, a, a friggin' anvil on my toe and it's throbbing. It's, it's, it's such an obvious indicator. And when you, when, when you call, when we call it out, people are like, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. It's called the database turnover rate. And it's basically a factor. Now, here's why this matters. Okay. Database turnover rate means how long would it take you to call each person in your database one time? Frank, literally, 
like based on how many, how much effort you've put into contacting your database on the phone. We've analyzed the text statistics. We've analyzed the, the email statistics. Call activity into your database. Unfortunately, it's, it's, it's like one of these things that we cannot AI our way out of, right? We have to pick the phone up. And actually, this is why I, I think Zillow's never going to replace us, right? The, these people are making the largest financial decision of their life, and they want somebody to guide them through that. And generally, that guidance is going to happen in a conversation with our voices. Now, th this statistic right here, let me show you guys this really quick. This stat comes out of this document right here. The NAR, National Association of Realtors, Home Buyer and Seller Generational Trends Report. I'm going to share this with everybody in the, on the call here, this link to this report. Now, this thing's, I don't know how many pages it is, 143, but it's just a bunch of graphs, just like this one. Brian, I can make sure you guys get your hands on these slides, absolutely. We'll send it out as part of the recording. So, it comes out of this, this document right here, right? There's actually two slides right here that I love all the time. This one, which is, 26% of sellers last year, you guys, use the agent that they bought their house with. Like, that's a staggering number. If we're going to get to 100 listings in our business, we're definitely going to need to get some of those from people we sold homes to in the past. And right now, in this industry, only 26%, Vicky, of our sellers or of our buyers actually come back and sell their house later with us. That's a problem. But this slide shows that there's actually a way for us to solve this problem. We believe the buyer number on this, you guys, is like 74%. It's basically three out of four people, once they say to themselves, I, we're going to buy a house, we're going to sell this house, honey, we're, we're making a life change. Three fourths of them, 77%, it's actually a little more than three fourths, will do it by talking to one agent. Now, if we know that's true, right? We know that's true. Here's the buyer number, 73%. Talk to one agent. So we're gonna figure out our database turnover rate. So we already have this number. How many contacts are in my database? Let's just say my number's a thousand still. Unless a new lead came in in the last three minutes, I still have a thousand contacts in my database. How many calls has, have you and your team logged to those people in the last 30 days? Now we use log because in our world, it's not in our database, it didn't happen. Now, Brian Harrington, it might've happened like today or tomorrow or a week from now, I can still remember that call I made to that prospect. But a month from now, six months from now, I don't know the last time I called them unless it's in my database. So how many calls have you logged in the last 30 days? That will determine if you take how many there are and you divide it by how many you've called in the last 30, how long it'll take you to call everyone. It'll give you a number. For example, let's say I had a thousand contacts in my database. I called 100 in the last 30 days. I reached out to 100 of them. I logged it. I can see in there. I know. It's going to take me 10 months to call everybody in there one time. Now, you don't have a database like Brivity that allows you to see who you're talking to and know when you last talked to them and maybe even get the notes from that conversation. And you might have a hard time figuring out how many people have I talked to in my world in the last 30 days. Okay, so Vicki, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm going to scroll up here and see because you've been playing along with us. Let me see if you gave me your, your number of contacts that you had, right? Vicki had, yeah. Vicky's crushing her database, absolutely crushing it. Faith says we're at a 1.7 is our database turnover rate on the Jay White group. That doesn't surprise me. You guys are 
trained assassins. Brian Harrington, what's your number? Every one of you guys, you this is, I'm telling you guys, we've been studying this for, I don't know, four years now, like this data. I could show you really quick. I don't often like showcase this in, in front of like non-place teams. This is a, uh, we track this data. We, we, we turn it into to charts and graphs and, and we try to prove out this. They start as theories for us in, in most, for the most part, right? We look at those NAR statistics. We're like, where in here can we unpack how to get to more business in our database? And then we start tracking the numbers and we start, so this is this shows all of our place teams, like 200 of them. And what it shows is their database turnover rate. So like this would be a team that has a database turnover rate of a 10. As we drive that database turnover rate lower, where we can get to a five. If we had a five, that means everybody could hear, let's say just do six, because that's easy math. If we had a six database turnover rate, everybody could get two calls this year from us. If we got it down to a four, everybody get three calls. If we got it down to a three, everybody get four calls. Now that's on average, right? Some prospects in your database are going to get one or two calls this year because you kind of have an idea of what's going on with them and you just need to check in a few times. Other leads that you've never met before, they're going to get you know five, eight, 10 calls until we finally get them on the phone that first time. And then maybe we move to a cadence of calling them once a quarter or once. But overall, as this rate gets driven down, this red line goes up. And the red line in our in, in this this data set we're looking at here is appointments. And we've got to get an appointment to get to the place where we have a buyer or a seller. <laughs> Brian says, our number is why we're signing up with Privity. High five, Brian. We're going to help you, bud. Look, we, we can help make you sure you understand this, give you the tools to go do it. The hard work, Brian, and it's why not everybody in real estate makes, you know, has 100 listings or makes a million dollars a year, right? is you got to go actually make the calls. Monica, time management, blocking, our teams do. Every morning, if you're on a place team, 8.30 a.m., you're powering up. I guarantee the Jay White group this morning, a couple hours ago, was powering up, and then they were into their prospecting time. You have a lot of jobs, a lot of hats you wear, Monica, as a real estate agent. Number one, prospector. Like, if you want to be a successful real estate agent. Now that can change over time. You get to a place in your business where you're like, I don't know what I would call it. Maybe you're, you're managing relationships because you got a whole bunch of them already. And you know, if they're going to buy or sell, they're going to come to you. Even though in, so, in most cases, by the way, even when we had that relationship, they don't actually come to us unless we foster that relationship with phone calls. Okay, so what is your database turnover rate and how are you going to improve it? Because it's the improvement of it, right, that leads us to more of the business in that database. Here's an example of just the difference, right? Like I, I made 100 calls versus 500. All of a sudden, if I had a thousand person database making 500 calls a month into it, I have the capacity to call every single person in my database six times this year, every two months. This is where our best agents live. In, 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 in our place world, our best agents figure out somehow, some way, through leverage, through using a dialer, we'll talk about that, to get through their database between a one and two month clip Give you an example. This is a, a lady in Bellingham, Washington. Her name's Katie Centinella. Last year was a hard year in real estate, by the way, as well. The year before, I think Katie did 58 or something like that transactions. Last year, 52 on a 1,400 person database. 62% home ownership rate in Whatcom County. There were 868 homeowners in there, a potential of 87 transactions to be had. She got her hands on 60 of them. Now, I don't know if you guys, we just ran all that math before. I hope you figured out what percentage did I extract? What if you had extracted 60%? Like, what would that have meant for your business? We're never going to get them all, Brian Harrington. Right? Faith, somebody in there's mom is a real estate agent. They're going to sell it with mom. 
her 30 day running average over the entire year. And this is Herculean, but she did this in a position where she, she was still doing 50 transactions. Now, this lady has subsequently brought on a showing assistant and is kind of working through our place leverage model to get to that, that next level where she can free up more time. Because as you get to 50 transactions, right, she got buyers in there, she's out showing houses. and But she keeps that time management, Monica. I love that you wrote that as the most recent comment in the chat. She keeps that time in the morning for her prospect. Now, we do some other things. Once a month, we do a, a thing called inventory creation day on the first business day of every month where teams come in like sometimes in the evenings and, and do these call nights. And our culture here at place using Brevity's technology has become one of, of calling people because we, we know looking at all the data, that's how you get the business. So this is an example of somebody running a really high level business making about 1,100 calls every 30 days into a 1,400-person database, turning it over at a 1.25, giving her the capacity to call everybody in here nine to, to, to 10 times a year. Again, they don't all get nine or 10 calls. Some, some leads get 25 calls. She's relentless at getting them on the phone. By the way, this is I was just in her database yesterday, and, and today two and a half months into the year she's got she's added another couple hundred uh contacts in her database some of that's her going into the team's pond and, and fishing away in that pond trying to find people she can nurture and watch today she has 58 unqualified leads in a set of leads of about 1,600, which is like 6 or 7%, which is insane. Most databases have unqualified percentages, like people I've gotten, this, like, I got all these leads in here, but I haven't talked to 38% of them, 42% of them, 65% of them. It's the high volume of calling into these people that gets her eventually connected to them, whether she doesn't care, she'll call them 25 times, right? At some point they raised their hand and said, I'm curious about something related to real estate. Now, here's some of the tools we're gonna use to increase this. The number one secret weapon inside of your Brivity account is your dialer. It's your dialer. Let, let's, so we've actually sat in an office with a team and timed them as they made manual calls into their into their database and what we found is on average in an hour we timed all, we a bunch of different agents over the course of an hour and just asked them make as many phone calls into your database as you can using your your cell phone basically and and then we time them from the time they hang up a call see we see how long it takes them to, to type into their phone On average, 20 seconds to type in the next phone number and, and, and kind of get the phone call started in that hour. Now, here's the funny thing. In the beginning of timing them, it's like a, it's like a 10 to 12 second transition because they know they're being timed and they're like trying to do it fast, right? By the end of that hour, they were make, some, some, some of the people were making 40 to 45 second transitions. Even though they know they were being timed, they, just, oh, they got tired, they're... They, they kind of lost the focus of, of moving from one call to the next. On average, it was 30 seconds. I, look, the longer those sessions go, and especially if you weren't actually being timed by somebody, there's a million ways for this thing, this phone, to, to grab your attention away from your job today, which was prospecting. It's like, you got a tweet. You got a Facebook message. Hey, what about this text from your, from your hubby? Like on and on and on. And this thing is constantly trying to say, don't make that next call. Just pay attention to me. Right? God forbid you answer one Facebook thing and all of a sudden you're 15 minutes into your Facebook and you didn't make the, the 10 more calls you could have made during that time. Think about her 1,100 calls that she made if, if on average, tw she was saving 20 seconds, just not dialing the phone, right? That would mean every three minutes, she was, every three calls, she saved a minute, 366 minutes. 
That's six hours that she saves in a month, you guys, where she, you dial the phone on your hand and call people and she just dot, she, they just serve up the next call to her. She doesn't, she doesn't waste that 20 seconds. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but she saves six hours that she can reinvest back into her family and her business, make more calls. The Brevity Dialer is your number one secret weapon. You can do sessions of up to 50 people. Katie's constantly calling through her unqualified leads, trying to get them on the phone in sessions of 50 because she knows if they answer her script to be the exact same thing. In the past, you guys have reached out to us about real estate here in Whatcom County. What are your real estate related plans coming up soon? The Brevity Dialer is going to help you take this database you already have, you all have one, and get through it more efficiently and effectively. Chris Suarez, the, the co-founder of Place, he talks about the flow state. This idea that lead gen time, I got to figure out how to get in that flow state. It's a function of time management, Monica. It's a function of bunkering down and, and, and getting rid of distractions. But it's also a function of like, what tools am I using to go do this? The dialer. All right, now there's a bunch of tools in Brivity. And I said, look, the, the calling these people, I promise you, is the number one way to unlock the business because 77% of them are going to go with one agent. And so if you show up every two months to them or versus every 10 months, right, are you going to have a higher likelihood to be their agent when they decide that they're thinking about buying or selling? Yeah, because they're only going to talk to one agent. And, and they're probably not just in your database. Right, This might actually be a competition against somebody else whose database they're in. But we've got tools that even when you're not calling them can keep you front of mind for the thing they care about. Now, a bunch of you guys are Brevity clients, so I know you're using market reports already and you're sending them out. My mom is a real estate agent. She calls these her come list me emails. Now, not everybody just gets these and then calls Gail and says, hey, Gail, will you come list my house? But that does happen. Hey, Gail, I've been getting your market report for the last two years. I know you've called me and texted me a whole bunch and I've totally ignored you, but we're ready now. Do you think you could come out and let us know how much our house would sell for? Her come list me emails. Now, a market report, I want you to think about this. If you are not sending, Vicky, you got your 594 people in the database or whatever it is, right? If one of them comes home today and they see a sold sign in their neighborhood, they see a for sale sign in their neighborhood, what are they going to do? They're going to find out what it's, sold, what it's sold for or what it's selling for. And if they're not getting this information from you delivered consistently about where they live, they're going to go figure it out. Ben Kinney jokes that, that if, if this describes you, right, you have clients in a database and they're not getting information from you about what's selling around their house, you are forcing them on a real estate speed dating event. You're like, hey, I don't have the info. Go out, find the info. You can Google it. You can go to Zillow. You can go to Redfin. Uh, maybe you'll find another agent that'll give you this, this great information that I could be giving you. I'm not. Good luck. Go out on the internet, get the info, and, and I hope you don't end up in somebody else's database. The reality is, though, the internet is designed to get them into somebody else's database. And even if they don't do it today, they'll start getting retargeted and remarketed to by Redfin and Zillow, and that'll be all over their internet browsing experience. And eventually, one day, they'll be like, yeah, I guess I am curious what my house is worth, or I do want to know what my neighbor's house sold for. And they'll click that thing, and they'll end up in somebody's database. Sometimes Zillow will even sell them right back to you, Monica. You're like, what? This is the lead. I already have this person in my database. Marker reports are designed to send out to your prospects in your database, the people that live somewhere, what's happening around where they live. What's currently for sale? What's pending? What's sold recently? What did it sell for? What does it look like on the inside? How, you know, it's a 3 2 and it sold for. Uh, 400,000. How close is that to mine? They can go in and they can consume all of that data about what's happening around their house and they want it. They want it. Think about this for a second. On the four major, like the most trafficked websites, Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, Homes.com, Redfin, like the top five, they're get, they are, 
a hundred million visitors a month, you guys. And we throw in all the rest of the real estate website. There's like 150 million people that go online to a real estate website every month when 5 million homes sell all year. If you don't think that the data that you guys have, have access to and the, the inventory that you guys market is, is something people like, even when they're not buying or selling, why the heck do 150 million people a month go on to real estate websites when only 5 million buy or sell all year long? They want this data. And if you don't give it to them, they will go find it and they will likely find it from someone else. And we call it a real estate speed data event because if they end up in a Ben Kinney team database, you're going to be in a dogfight, Brian Harrington, to keep that client because Katie Sentinel is going to call them every day until she can get them on the phone and start to build a relationship with them. You got to have these market reports. Now, eventually they might raise their hand and say, hey, hey like Gail's people do. Gail, thanks. You've been sending us this report. You think you can come out and tell us what our house is worth? And so when Gail gets one of those, she does her CMA. She does it inside of Brivity. We've got a tool, it's called Brivity CMA. And I can go in there, pull the data in from our MLS. It's all hooked up to your, to the IDX or, or VOW feeds from your MLS. And we can easily create CMAs inside of the tool in Brivity. Frank, you get to decide how often these go out, bud. You can do them once a week. You can send them every two weeks, or you can send them once a month. We send them to anybody we send them to that's, that's somebody we know already, we send them every two weeks. Our past clients, our sphere, leads that we've gotten into communication with and we wanna nurture them, right? The circle prospecting dials that we're out there making and then we get somebody in the database. This is one of the primary functions of how we nurture them every two weeks which means they're gonna get 26 of those touches a year from us letting them know everything that's happening around where they live. Oh, Wesley, this is great for single agents, man. You, get, you don't have time all day to be sending up updates to all your people about what's going on inside of your, your market, or especially around where they live. Vicky, yeah. So leads in general, we put them on every week, especially if we haven't talked to them yet, right? They're gonna get a weekly market update from us. Now, we do these on buyers and sellers. Sellers obviously are getting an update around where they live. Buyers, though, we'll give them these market reports for where they're thinking about wanting to live. Like if we saw them on our website looking at a $500,000 place in Bellingham, they're going to get a market report showing them the activity in Bellingham between 450 and 550. Here's what's happening in Bellingham. That area, are you thinking about buying this? These are the houses on the market. Here's the ones that have sold and how much they sold for. We want a more educated prospect on the other end. Shay, it, the, the single agents, it's very, very affordable, uh, ranging from 150 up to, I mean, we have mega teams that have 40 agents running Brivity and, and, and the, the, scale, the price scales up as you have more users, basically. CMAs. Now, we have seller lead capture. So if you know, on your websites that you get with Brivity now, look, and we can run campaigns for you. We got all kinds of lead campaigns we can run. We can help you drive people to these so you can get more prospects. If you did that math earlier and you're like, oh my gosh, uh, there's only 30 deals in this. And then I, my, my goal is 40 for next year. We're probably gonna need some more prospects in there. We can help you with that. These seller lead capture pages for some of you guys that have really big databases. We will often, a couple of times a year, we will go back into our existing database and we'll try to get people in there to raise their hands. Right? We're constantly using the tools we have back into the database. Hey, guys, I've been thinking about what your house is worth. I know the, the, the news is saying all sorts of crazy stuff about real estate prices. It's not actually, the sky's not falling. If you're curious what your house is worth, let us know. And we will constantly kind of turn these tools back into the database to try to get people in our database already to raise their hand again. Again, we can do lead campaigns for you, Google pay-per-click, Facebook campaigns, buyers, sellers. By the way, buy, like everybody thinks about like, I want seller leads, I want seller leads. Here's the reality though. If you went out in your market and started generating buyer leads, what's the home ownership rate in your market? That's about the percentage of buyer leads that would also be potential sellers, right? In Whatcom County, if I generated a hundred buyer leads, statistically, 
a bunch of them are already homeowners, 62.4% or 64.2. I can't remember which one it was. Our advertising is getting pretty advanced. We're starting to do, or we've been doing these kind of dynamic property retargeting types of, of campaigns where if, if somebody ever comes to your website and looks at that $500,000 property in Bellingham that I mentioned before, we're just going to follow them around the internet with similar properties to the ones they were looking at. Some of you guys that have Brivity already or, or a similar system, a Boomtown or a Sync or a Conversion or a, a follow-up boss, a lot of times in your database, you can see who's been on your website. And we're really aggressive at Brivity at trying to help you get more of those people in your database onto your website. Right, Listing alerts are the primary functionality of that that drives that behavior. But do, do this today. Go into your data if you're if you're a Brivity client. If you're not and you have a similar system that does this, awesome. Go in and go look, let's say over the last 90 days, okay, at people that have been on your website and then put them in order by the, the average price of the homes those people are looking at. A lot of you guys have buyers in your database that are looking at price points that would indicate they're a move up buyer. Right. Let's take Bellingham, Washington, for an example. A first time home these days in Bellingham, you're going to be lucky to get in at 400,000. At 600,000 is kind of that first move up price point, let's say. So when we see somebody on our website looking at $600,000 houses, especially if they have a local area code, we immediately are like, this person lives somewhere around here already. Most of the time, right? Most of the time, they didn't just, I, you know, be at a company that IPO'd. Now they got a whole bunch of cash, and they're going to move into the market in a price point that's not that first-time home buyer price point. So if they're looking at the first price point, that second price point, or even that third price point in your, they probably have a house to sell. And we get super, I don't want to say aggressive, but we're we're super crafty in how we try to extract where they live today. Sometimes we might even go look their name up in, you know, in in the property uh, records at, at the county or something, right? A lot of you guys can do that through your MLS. We use a thing called Ben Verified to go out and try to try to kind of backtrack of maybe a buyer that we've got a phone number and email for, but we don't know where they live, but we see they're looking in a move up price point. Now, at some point you have listings and one of the things my, so my, again, I mentioned my mom's a real estate agent. She uh, started in 2016 in the business. And in 2017, my mother did 79 transactions. She's a savage, just an absolute real estate machine, you guys. But one of the things she learned very early on was when I take a listing, it's a showcase for everybody who might ever come across that thing for me to be their agent to sell their house potentially one day. And one of the, 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 number, the number one sources of leads for her of people that live in that area is her, her, her quickly calls to action. So quickly, our text-based mobile strategy basically allows me to set up a keyword that I can put on a sign out in front of the listing as a writer, let's say. Now, we don't use the traditional little you know six-inch by 24-inch writers that are kind of small and just hang either on top of or below the sign. We use a, a stake in the ground, standalone 18 by 24 sign that has a call to action where somebody driving by that house can get all the photos and all the information and the price about that home. And we get their cell phone number. What my mom found and, and a lot of our teams have about one in four of the people that drive by or walk by that house and, and text are actually a neighbor living nearby. And when we call them or we text them, they'll say, oh, we're not looking to buy that house. We were just curious what it was worth because we live in the neighborhood. This is an audition for her, right? It's an audition for her next listing. It also helps her get leads, like instead of flyers, if everybody that walked by and wanted to grab your flyer, you could just grab their hand and say, hey, wait, 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 what's your cell phone number? The best leads in real estate, I believe. Why? It's 100% the phone number of the person that inquired about real estate in the neighborhood you're selling a house in. Again, we've found that about one in four of those are some local neighbor 
that's curious about what that neighbor is going to get for their house or is even asking for. Now, once we get into our transactions, we've got transaction auto plans that allow you to basically deliver on the promises of the things you tell a seller when you're sitting down in their kitchen trying to get them to agree to list with you, right? We make a lot of promises. We've got, we've got listing presentations that tell them all the things we're going to do to market the property. The number one complaint of sellers out of that NAR buyer and seller profile that I shared the link to with you guys. Here it is again, is lack of communication from the listing agent. So number one thing sellers wish would have been a, went a little bit different, even though most of them say you got, you did a pretty good job helping them get their house sold. When we ask what could have been done better, they say, I wish there would have been a little bit more communication. I didn't know what they were doing once they took that listing. Our smart transaction auto plans allow you guys to make sure you're delivering on all the promises. And then we can also communicate what we're doing back to the seller. Did I miss a slide there? Oh, look at that. Okay, we have a portal. Your sellers can log into it. You can choose what you share with them about what you're doing or, or whatnot. We can even automate communication back to those sellers. The transaction auto plan functionality inside of Brivity when you take a listing is what helps you give raving fans so they go out and tell all their friends and family and they absolutely come back to do business with you next time, not 26% of them like is the industry average. Speaking of the listing you have leading more potential listings because people see the kind of work that you put out, Brivity Marketer, easily becoming one of my favorite tools inside of Brivity. Not that, not that, um, hasn't been around for us very long, maybe, maybe like a year now, a little over. We're constantly adding functionality into here. We can do mailer campaigns. So when we take, when you take a listing, you can actually set Brevity Marketer up. So it'll literally build a campaign, a mail campaign, and, and be sitting there waiting for you to send it. All of our postcards go out with either a, a, a text code where somebody can text in for info or a unique URL that if they go to that URL, we know what house that URL was at because we put a unique URL in every single postcard you send out. You can send to your own list if you wanted to, to mail to, to a farming neighborhood you already have addresses for. You can come into our tool and just tell us, I just want to send 200. I want you guys to figure out who are the best 200 to send it to, and that's what we'll do. We won't send a postcard to the neighboring house that just bought you know, a month ago. We'll send it to the house four doors down that they've lived there for eight years, got lots of equity, heck of a lot closer to, to selling than the guy who just moved in next door six months ago. He's thinking couches and curtains, you guys. So our mailer tool can actually target for you the best homes to send that, that postcard to. We can do them on just solds. We can even invite people to open houses. We can do handwritten notes in here. We can send them market data. There's all sorts of postcard template options in there. We've got print media. You're still gonna have to do some flyers every now and then when you do your open house or maybe for whatever reason, I don't know why, you don't use your quickly sign. That would be kind of silly, but Print media, super easy. We've got all the data feeding in from your MLS. And when you take a listing in a couple of clicks, you can have, bye Vicky, you can have a flyer done. No problem, super easy. Takes you 15 seconds, maybe 30. Digital ads, you can run your own digital ads if you want. We've got a whole Facebook tool set up. It's really easy. It'll drive people directly to your website. If they register, it'll set up listing alerts for them automatically and drop them into the CRM. These are some of the most affordable leads in real estate right now. Face still, you know, a couple of years ago, they were a dollar. And then, you know, two years ago, they were $2. And now they're still three to $4. They're not going to, next year, they're going to be five. We can do social media graphics. How many of you guys are out promoting your listings on the socials? We've got an amazing set of templates, hundreds of them that you can come in and, and make sure that you've got beautiful marketing so that anybody in your world who's watching you list this property is going to think, you know what, I'm going to use Heather Wright because she's clearly a master at this. Look how beautiful that marketing is. 
It's consistent, showcases the, the, the listing in a, an amazing way. We can do these videos. So we have a whole suite of tools. Guys, I probably just scratched the surface. There's lots of stuff behind this. I wanted to give you a sense today of one, how much business is in your database? Two, the exact, I mean, guys, I, I wish there was a magic pill for this. I wish we could give you something that could automate the calling of, we can automate, you know, texts and emails. We can automate the sending of, of market data. We can automate sending them properties. But if you really want to extract the business, you want to get your next hundred listing, it's going to be a function of talking to people on the phone. There's a, there's a guy named Naval. He's a podcaster, but, but he's really a Silicon Valley investor. If you've never heard of Naval, go check his podcast out. It's one of the smartest kind of quick hitting podcasts uh, around. Naval has this concept. Again, he's a, he's a you know early investor in eBay, one of these kind of guys, right? Super, super intelligent. He's got a podcast. One of his episodes, he talks about specific knowledge. The idea of we get paid Wesley Williams to the level of our specific knowledge. Your guy's specific knowledge should be around how to add value to somebody's life during the time when they're not thinking about buying or selling. When, when, when these people raise their hand, they're like, I'm ready to go, Wesley. Like if we can time it right so that we're there when that happens, like you guys all know what to do from that point. But your specific knowledge in real estate and the people that get paid really, really well, it's about what am I saying to people during the time when they're not buying or selling so that when they're ready to buy or sell, they, they don't think of anybody else but me because they only think of one agent. You have to develop those skills. That, that, and most of the time, the reason we don't call people in our database is one of two reasons. We don't know what to say to them or we think we know when they're gonna buy or sell so we don't show up until right around that time. And the problem with that is some other, some other agent could outtime you. So we are asking our, our, our partners to go in and consistently get calling through your database because that, you guys, is far and away the number one way to extract business out of there. If you're interested in Brevity, you can text. This is a quickly thing. You can pull out your phone right now and text the word platform to the number 59559. And one of our team will reach out and Wesley connect with you. What we'll do is tomorrow you'll get a recording of this webinar, Wesley, and I'll ask our team to include the, the slide deck for you guys so that you've got all those formulas in there uh, around, you know, how much business and, and database turnover rates and those kind of things. Faith Hill, I really appreciate you joining me. Wesley, Heather and Vicky, who I think already dropped out of here, Candace, Brian Harrington, Frank, I appreciate all of you, Paul Brown, and uh, Nate Budden. If you're still here, bud, tell your brother hi. Uh, him and Angie are two of my favorites. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great, great rest of your week.